Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to a new video. I think one of the best ways to learn the tools you use, or in this case, a framework, is to start building some of their components. And that's why I think that the build your own framework thing works great as a study, as an exercise. I, I wouldn't do this in real life, but if I was starting out, or even today, I think it is a really good exercise to build your own tools. We already use them daily. And sometimes we don't know the internals, sometimes we're not really interested in knowing the internals. But I think this is a great exercise. And this is what we're going to do in this video. We're going to start building a service container similar to Laravel's. Obviously, the Laravel service container has years of care, years of code in it. So it deals with small, complicated things that we wouldn't really see in our own simple implementation. And obviously implementing it today is much easier because the work has been done prior to this with Zen, with Symfony, with Laravel. So we already know how it works. We already know the caveats. We already know what to think of. So it becomes much easier. But even still, I think this is a great exercise. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys learned something with it as well. We're going to use a test driven development approach. I think it works great for situations like this one. We already have a rough idea of, of what the public API is going to look like. We already know what we want it to do. We're just not entirely sure how we're going to implement it. So test-driven development works great for those situations. You can write tests for each step and you can progress pretty easily with that and make sure that, you, that your implementations as you get into the more complicated things do not break what you've already implemented. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know on the comments, leave a like, follow me on Twitter, that kind of thing. But really, let, let me know on the comments if you guys liked this type of video, if this video was helpful, if you've learned something out of it. Let's jump into the code. All right, let's keep this first lesson very simple. What is the basic functionality of a container? Take the Laravel service container, for example. Of course, it has lots of niche use cases. It has contextual binding. It resolves dependencies. But keeping it simple, you use a service container to fetch and register dependencies. So this is what we're going to be implementing on this first lesson. This is also one of the situations where I think test-driven development makes a lot of sense. We know what we want. We're not entirely sure how we're going to achieve that through code, how we're going to implement that. But we kind of know what the public API looks like. So I have this project set up. I have a couple of dependencies set up. I have the PSR container. PSR means PHP standard recommendations. It is a set of suggestions and we use it daily. For example, we're using the PSR for autoloading. The PSR 11 is the container PSR and it provides some interfaces that we can use within our container implementations so that we can offer interoperability between packages. We don't have to do this, but I thought it would be good to mention this on this video and also use it for this video. It is a very simple interface. If we go to the package, you can see that we have a container interface, which offers a get and a has method. So you can get a service from the container and you can check if the container has something. You have a container execution interface, which is a generic exception. And you also have a not found exception interface, which you want to throw when your container does not, uh, is not able to resolve a certain dependency. In this case, if it doesn't exist. All right, so I have that set up. I have PSR for auto loading set up for the source folder, which doesn't have anything in there. And I have the test directory set up for PHP unit. So I'm going to start by creating a class under source. It's going to be called container. And after that, I'm going to create a test under the test directory. So container test. We want this to extend the PHP unit test case. And then we can add, we can start adding our tests. From the top of my head, there are a couple of things that I can think of that I want to test and that I want to make sure work. For example, um, I'm going to create a test called test. It allows you to register services, something like that. And huh, look, look at that copilot. It actually has a really good suggestion, but we're not going to follow it. So I'm actually going to disable copilot. We want this to return void. Before we write any code, let's think about this. We want to be able to register dependencies. And following the PSR, we also want to be able to use the method has to check whether a dependency has been registered. So if we were to write some pseudocode, how we would like this public API to look like, 
maybe we could do something like this. We could say new container. We want to instantiate it. Oops, not this one, this one. And I want to simplify this. So we want to say something like register. And we can pass a key, which is the key of the service. If you think about it, let me comment this real quick. The container is basically hash map, which would be in PHP an associative array. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically an array where we specify keys. For example, you can say name, Mateus. That is an associative array. And a container is kind of like that. You have this big array and then you have the services. So for example, you have my class, which returns an instance of my class. Then you have my other dependency or service, which actually returns a closure, which returns one, something like that. So at its core, this is what a container use. You register things within this array, and then you pick things from this array. Of course, it becomes a little bit more complicated further down the road because you have things like singletons and resolving dependencies and contextual binding, that kind of thing. So it's not that simple, but at its core, the way that the container is stored things, is stored services is in an array like that. And since we use the name of the service as the key, this is an O1 operation. So let's get rid of this. And let's start writing the code. So we want to register a service. We can say that we want it to, we want to pass closure and we want to return a task class. So a task service. And we're going to create this class at the bottom. We're going to use this class on our test. So test service, it is going to be an empty class like that. All right, cool. So we know that we want to register this. And if we think about PHP unit assertions, we want to assert that the container has that dependency. So we want to follow that PSR. We can say has service, oops, like this. And then we also want to assert that this service, if we can get it, is an instance of test service. So we can say test service class like this. Cool. So if we run this test and I have an alias set here, PU means PHP unit. Uh, we already get a call to undefined method container register. Obviously, we didn't have that set up. So let's go into the container class and let's start implementing this. So the first thing is I'm going to implement the container interface and PHP unit is going to add our stub. So we have a get and a has method. And if we run this, we still get an error because we don't have the register method. So let's write the register method. So we want to register um, a service based on its key. And then let's call it value. So we want this to be mixed for now. And this is going to return void. So let's think about how we can implement this. Like I said, this is a hash map, right? This is an associative array. So we can add a property to this class called services, which is an empty array. And when we register, we can push this to this array. We can actually push it to its key. So we can say services. We want to say that the service of key the key we give equals the value, right? So we can then return. No, I mean, we don't have to return anything really since it's void. Actually, let's return the class itself. We return self. Let's run this once again. Okay, now we have this working, but the has method, it's not returning anything. So let's implement this once again. And this is really simple. So we want to say our A key exists. And I always forget the order. Okay, so the key that we want to check is the service ID. And we want to check within the service array. Let's rename this to, I'm going to call it key for now. Oh, it complains about that. I didn't know. Okay, I'm dumb. This needs to be ID. Okay, let's run this once again. Okay, now we're moving along. We were getting this error about the has method. Now we're getting in there about the, the second assertion, which is this one. So we want to make sure that we're getting the proper, um, the proper return, that we're getting the service that we want. So really simple. For now, we can say, and this is not going to work. I'm going to show you guys why. Let's run this. So we got no. Oops, it's ID right here. My bad. So we got a closure, right? When we were expecting an instance of that service. Now, let me tell you why. You might have noticed that here I passed a closure instead of an instance of a class. Here's the problem. If we were to pass an instance, um, okay, we the test passed, but we have a code coverage stuff. Okay, cool. Not, let's not worry about it. All right, I removed the code coverage stuff real quick. We don't need that. 
but it is passing. But here's one thing. When we call, when we ask the container to give us an instance of something twice, it should give us different instances of the class by default. So if I were to call get service twice, I should get two different instances. And let's see if that happens. Let's say assert. So we have an assertion called assert same. The difference between assert same and assert equals is that assert same looks for the reference in memory. So if you give it two objects and they're different objects, they might be the same class, maybe an object of the same class and an instance of the same class. But if they're different objects, this is going to fail. In this case, we want to say assert not same. So we want to say that whenever we get a service, if we call this again, we should not get the same service. We should get, yes, we should get an instance of the class, but we should get a different instance. So let's run this. And you can see it's failing. They are referencing the same object. And the reason is, since we pass an instance of test service, that instance is being saved in memory within this class, and then we're just giving the same instance. So what could happen this, in this situation is, if you were to ask the container for an instance at a place in your code, and then you would manipulate that instance, and then you would ask the container for the same service at another place, it would give the second place the same instance it gave the first place. And then you would be manipulating something that's already dirty. There are ways that we can handle this in code, but for now, we can just pass a closure like this. So we can say this. However, if we run this code, it's not going to pass because we're receiving a closure. So within the get method, we can first uh, fetch the the service. So we can say service ID, right? And then we can say something like is callable and we can pass the service or rather we can, we can actually say if it's a closure, right? I think it's better. So if service is an instance of a closure, in this case, we want to resolve that closure. I'm sorry. We want to resolve the service. Let's run this. Okay. Now we're passing. And if it's not, then yes, we want to return that service. All right, so we're already able to register things within the container and we can fetch them and we can also make sure that we're not getting the same instance for two different service requests within the container. Let's rename this to allows you to register services using closures. Look, maybe we want tasks that we can give primitives as well. So we can say tasks that allows you to register services using, for example, strings. Let's start with that. So we can say container equals new container, container register service, and we can pass uh, some string like this. And then we can say that first we want it to have, we could extract those three separate tasks. So I'm not even going to include this one. And then we can say that we want to say that the result of this should be some string. So container get service should return some string. Let's run our tests. Okay, we're passing as well. Let's refactor this task a little bit. So we're going to go with protected function setup like this. This is a PHP unit function. This is going to run before each one of the tasks. And we're going to say uh, the container equals a new container, right? So now we can simplify this a little bit. We can get rid of this. We can get rid of this and we can rename this to this container. Let's run our tests. Okay, we're looking good. All right, so we're going to have some basic implementation of a container. We can use it to fetch dependencies. So if we ask the container for a dependency, it will give it to us. Okay, now we have basic functionality. One key thing that we're missing though is we have to, we need to have an instance of this container, right? So how would this work within a real life app? We, we wouldn't have access to a specific instance of the container. For example, let me write a quick code here. So we can even write this within a test. So let's say test, it persists services between instances. And we don't really have instances, so we might want to rename this later. But the situation we have is we want to register a service as usual, right? And let's say we lost reference to this container. Right. So I'm actually going to do the following to make sure that we don't have access to it. I'm going to say new container like this, and then I'm not assigning it to a variable so we don't have access to it. How do we 
fetch something from this container if we don't have access to it. That's why the container must be a singleton. We must be able to access the same instance at any given time. Doing that is not complicated at all. So we can write a test. Uh, let's copy this one. We want to make sure it's an instance of test service. And we don't have access to the container. We don't want to use the one that we have. We don't want to use that instance because it doesn't have any data. But we can say something like that. Container, get instance then get the service. Obviously, we don't have that method implemented. So if we run this, it's going to fail. Let's implement it. Um, the way that we implement this is, is it's a really nice trick. So we can create a protected static property called instance. And the trick of this is when you have a static property, it means that you're talking about something on the class level, while your regular properties refer to the object level. And an object is an instance of a class. So when you're talking about the service property, it is referring to a property within the object. When you talk about the static property, it refers to a property within the class level. And with that, we can do this little trick. So if we already have an instance, we can just return, right? But if we don't have an instance, then we can just create one. So we can say, if self instance is no, if it doesn't exist, we can create it. So we can say instance new static, a new instance of the container class, and then we can just proceed as usual. And this always returns static. I'm sorry, self. All right, let's run this. Okay, we got no. And the problem is, again, we're running this within a separate instance. So if we change this for get instance and rerun this, it works. So we don't have direct access to any instance. We're not assigning this to any variables, but we still have access to the container. So maybe a better way to do this is it preserves the container instance. Let's call this a test. Let's add a test prefix. This returns void. So we can test that whenever we call container get instance, we get the same instance. So we can say first instance equals container get instance, second instance container get instance. And then we just want to do an assert same. So we can say assert same. We want to make sure that the first instance is the same instance as the second one. And if we run our test, it is also passing. So now we're able to call the same instance of the container at any place within our code. We can register dependencies to it using either a closure or passing a primitive. And we can also check whether our container has a given service. And we're also following the PSR 11, the container PSR. All right, so I think that's pretty much the basic functionality of a container. We are able to register services, we are able to fetch those services, and we are able to fetch the same instance of a container. Obviously, this is very, very simple. We're not dealing with singletons, which we're going to cover on the next video, and we're not dealing with automatic dependency resolving, which is super important as well. So for now, let's stop with this. And I think it's really interesting to see how we could use those tests to guide us on how to write our code. We already knew how we wanted the public API to look like, and then we just needed to implement it. All right, guys, I hope this made some sense, and I see you guys on the next video. Bye-bye.